Welcome back guys to the fourth installment of my five-part fantasy map making tutorial series. So in our last um, video we focused on making forests and cities, swamps, adding those sort of smaller details to our world and in this tutorial we're going to work on inserting text onto our map and working on a map scale that will show us distance. So let's begin. Um, we're going to start working on text. Now again, I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS6, and if you don't have that, or if you want to try it out, you can visit adobe.com and get a free trial. And there are more instructions on that in the first video. I'm also using a Wacom Bamboo Graphics Tablet. I highly recommend using a graphics tablet um, for the drawing parts of your map making. So we've selected our text tool and the first thing I'm going to show you is just how we put in a general title onto our map. So let's say we're going to name this little city right here and um, we're going to name it Alpha. Got this kind of funky weird font. I'm going to change that to something a little more map-like. Uh, that looks good. Okay. This is fairly self-explanatory and there's not not much many tricks to it. Um, but one thing I do want to show you is how to make this text stand out and not look so flat. And to do that, I'm going to come down here and select the text layer for alpha. And, you know, unlike all of the other things we've added to this map, we don't have to create a new layer for this because it automatically does that for you. Double click on that layer, and it pulls up your layer style. And these are all different ways that you can make the, the word stands out on your, on your map. Um, anything from beveling, outlining. I'm going to change the color here. It's a little bit easier to change the color in this menu than to select the text and change it manually. So I like to do it that way. So I'm going to change the color to something. Um, we'll put it in black. Just keep it simple for now. And to make it stand out, uh, a lot of times I'll add a shadow. Um, kind of use it a 3D effect or an outer glow, and I really like the outer glow because it just gives it a soft um, characteristic so that, you know, it doesn't stand out too much, but it just enough to, uh, to look kind of cool. So, drop in a glow. It looks good. I'm not going to mess with any of the specifics here. I am going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Lower it right over the city there. Okay. And when I zoom in, looks great. So, continuing in that way, you can label all of your cities, your villages, your regions if you want to. But there's another thing I want to show you with text before we move on, and that is how to make text that curves or wraps around different features. So, for example, Let's say I wanted to put the name of this sea, this body of water, down here. But I don't want to just throw it on flat. I want it to kind of curve the way these islands are kind of curving up. All right, so first thing, we're going to grab our pen tool and put it on the freeform pen tool setting. And following the curvature of these islands, I'm going to draw a slightly curved bent line. You don't want to get too... Uh, bent in, in the shape because then the letters are going to run together and you won't be able to read it. So next I'm going to select my text tool and when I hover the cursor over the line, as you can see, it recognizes the line and says, oh, okay, well it's right here. So I'm going to click in the middle of that line. Um, right now I've got my text centered. It would depend which of these settings you had selected where you are going to type in the line. If I had this one, I'd start over here. But I'm going to keep it centered. 
uh, for now. And we're going to call this all uh, the stormy sea. Okay. Looks great. I'm very pleased with my slightly curved text here. And just as we did with the city name, we are going to make this stand out a little bit. Um, I'm going to keep it consistent with the outer glow. However, since it's over the ocean, I, I want it to have a blue glow around it. So let's see here. Something that's going to stand out. Oh, that looks great right there. And, you know, in these settings, feel free to adjust how you want it to look. Make it brighter, bigger, brighter, whatever you want. So, I really like the look of that right there. Okay. All right, I've got all my names put down here. Um, as you can see, I named my mountains. I've got all of my cities named and... I've named all the regions or countries of this land, um, and the way that you differentiate between city title, land title, ocean title is completely up to you. I chose to go with a larger, um, more transparent title for the countries themselves because I didn't want it to get too crowded, and that's a way of sort of leaving a little bit of space in there. So. Everything's named. The only thing left now is to name the entire world that this is. So to do that, there you mean completely up to preference, whatever you want to do. I'm simply going to put down a basic rectangle and let's see, let's fancy it up a little bit. And I'm just going to put my title of my land in this lovely tan beige rectangle whoa let's not get crazy and you can find brushes that will have some pretty cool uh, shapes and that you can put your your land titles in if you want uh, for now I'm just gonna keep it simple tutoria and Just going to keep it, well, I don't like it, kind of weird. Okay. So there we are. Our land has been named, and it is time to move on to map scales. Alright, first I'm going to select my line tool and I'm going to draw a line between um, these two cities, Gulf and Alpha. So let's say for the purposes of my story I need Gulf and Alpha to be a two day journey apart from each other. So what would that distance be? And this is where we start getting into math and I know that's yucky and not fun but we have to do it for the purposes of realism. and. So, Gulf and Alpha, two days journey, that's going to be about, let's say, 60 miles. If a human being can walk 20, 30 miles going at a pretty good speed and uh, over relatively flat terrain, then that'll be about a two day journey from Gulf to Alpha, maybe three days. Uh, if you're riding a horse, horses have a pretty wide range depending on the kind of horse, depending on the terrain. Uh, again, what kind of a hurry you're in, but it's going to take a, anywhere from 15 to 40 miles in a day on a horse. And you, it, keep in mind that horses don't actually gallop at a full speed for like hours on end. Um, sometimes I've seen that in, in fantasy books or in things like that, and it just, it's not realistic because the horse is going to drop dead of exhaustion long before that happens. So keep in mind the horse is going to be walking. So, though it is faster than. A human walking, you know, it's not that much faster. All right, so this can be 60 miles. 60 miles between Gulf and Alpha, that's going to be the scale by which I measure 
the rest of this this world. So I'm going to take this line that I drew, drop it down here at the bottom of my map, get it nice and sort of relatively straight here. Okay, not really working out. Drop it down here at the bottom of my map. Good enough. Um, and that's going to be my scale. And it doesn't look really fancy now. It's, it's really easy to spice it up later. Um, but scale, yeah. This is going to be 60 miles. We'll just put 60 miles on there. Alright, so 60 miles. Simple little scale down there. You can make it fancier if you want. There are some brushes, um, stamps that you can use that are scales, and you just simply have to adjust them to the right size. So that's really easy, and now I have a great way to measure, um, especially as I'm writing, and find out how long does it actually take to get from one place to another and to keep a sort of consistency to your map. Um, you can even use this if you want to really get detailed to measure the entire world, see how big it is. Something I've done before is take my map, find out how big it is with my scale, and then look at a map of, uh, for example, the states and see, you know, oh, this map turns out is the size of Georgia or California. And that really helps me get a good mental picture of the size and scale of my land. That concludes this fourth tutorial in the map making series. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you for watching. In part five, we are going to work on some finishing touches to really bring everything in this map together, things like textures and contours. So I hope you'll check back and watch again, and happy map making!